Well, we're back out at the park. One of these days it'll be too cold to go, but I guess he's going to make me walk over here. Oh, well, there's three little birds climbing. <laughs> oh, I hope you could see that. Oh, that was so cute. Uh, he controls animals. So, uh, yeah, he does that a lot. One interesting thing is he has sent me, like, a lot of strange creatures. Not, not creatures, but, like, insects and animals. And I noticed at some point in time that there always seemed to be something wrong with them. So I got a deer that looked like it had mange. I got another deer here in Nebraska that had its ear, uh, it had a slice in its ear. Um, uh, had this butterfly sit down right in front of us, but its wing was broken. Um, it just seems like every time, and th there's other ones too, I can't remember them. Um, I'll see if I can find the photos. But he always sent or worked with animals that have some kind of, of uh, perceived flaw. So today, um, I'm sorry, I was thinking about what I was doing when he, I was making a friendship bracelet for one of my viewers. Um, now I'm probably going to have to make lots of friendship bracelets because I said that. It was for a teenager. Um, oh, boy. Where was I? We are talking about I was making a friendship bracelet. And then he was talking about... Oh, you jerk. He knows I hate this. I can't imagine... Imagine making me talk funny. Imagine that uh, you all like it either when I lose my train of thought. He just blanks my brain. I don't know why that's necessary. Um, I asked him if he wants me to turn it off. If I can't remember what I'm saying, uh, oh, when it hits me when it hits me um oh well the topic of this video was supposed to be <laughs> no that was last night's video today's video oh oh it's almost there am i missing something what's going on um i guess he doesn't want me to talk about that Talking about the park. It is infuriating. <clears throat> um. Oh. The flaws. So, okay. So everything he would send me would have all these perceived flaws. And then, um, I don't know. I just perceived other instances and, and whatnot. And I realized that uh, God seems to greatly enjoy imperfection. Nature is almost hardwired to have imperfections that don't go out of a certain um, boundary or algorithm. He's doing it again. That's how he keeps my mind off things. My the reality of my existence, which is horrifying. He just blocks it out and I have to think whatever he has going through my head. I have no choice. I mean, 
people do have some choice, but like during moments of importance in the story, you all don't have your own minds. So anyway, today as I was making the friendship bracelet, um, <laughs> he said, humans love and seek perfection. He said, I love and seek meaning. And then he always reminds me of when I was in high school, I had this friend whose sister bought her a used uh, copy of Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. And I thought that was like the worst gift ever. And then I started to think about it and I thought someone else has read that book and like I started to understand why her sister did that. And anyway, God is very much like that. Um, this whole movement of uh, Christians believing that our body is the temple, so we have to uh, coddle it and treat it like it's a, you know, well-oiled machine at all times, or God's going to get mad at us. Well, I know that's not true at all, because uh, as the Bible tells us, the poor are his children. And if the poor are his children, then uh, if taking care of the physical body was that important, um, he would have given them a way to do so. But now that he's impoverished me beyond comprehension, I realize that if you are poor in this country, you cannot... Uh, Worrying about your health when you go to the grocery store is like the last thing on your mind. Like, and you don't even, you, when you're poor, you don't even care, really, if, if, if your existence continues that much longer. Because it's so uncomfortable all the time. So, um, I know for a fact for a huge fact that God doesn't care about the physical state of our body at all. As a matter of fact, he needs us to die on our death date. So, um, carrying a lot of extra weight is a huge uh, sacrifice, both emotionally and physically for the kingdom. Every bit you suffer on earth kind of goes into a, into a big pot and, uh, and the more you suffer, the more you get paid, essentially. And, 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 I mean, he writes the story, so you don't get to choose. And not many people would choose the life of uh, poor people. Poor people in America or poor people anywhere else. I mean, I used to praise the Lord that my life has always been comfortable enough. I've never been super comfortable, but I've always been comfortable enough uh, since I was 23. And I was always so grateful for that. And I think back then, if you would have asked me, if you knew you were going to be rewarded in heaven, would you have wanted uh, for suffering? Would you have wanted a different life? Would you have wanted to be a slave? Would you have wanted to, you know live in a dilapidated home with roaches? Would you want all the stuff that the poor have to endure? And I would have been like, no, thank you, Lord, very much. I'm good where I'm at. Whatever you give me in the afterlife, I am fine with. That's how I felt. Like, I don't, I don't need that much on earth. Why would I need that much in heaven? I'm not a materialistic person. So what could God give me in heaven was my way of thinking. But then he started allowing me to visit heaven and I realized that suffering is what our soul longs for. Like people that like, you know, there was the Catholic groups and over periods of time, there've been in all religions, people who uh, beat themselves, mutilate themselves. This is a desire in their soul to suffer because uh, suffering purifies the kingdom of God. 
So, uh, God loves our battle scars. I don't even know if that was related. See, the second I think, is he going to make my mind go blank? It goes blank. Um, and it seems to happen when there's partial uh, points to be made, you know, at the most important time and changing focus and conversation. Um, so, oh, I'm going to make a shorter video about this. But God just said that he would like, uh, one of my viewers sent me a picture last night and it looked just like uh, it was of the cloud. She had sent it for one specific reason, but then as I looked at it, I saw what looked like uh, an ultrasound image of a fetus or a baby. And so uh, he laughed. And then today he said, anyone that wants to, uh, he just said, join the revolution. Um, God can't do just, God doesn't do just a lot of random miracles. Or he hasn't up to this point because uh, up to this point he hasn't been here to, to help us. He pretty much needs us to suffer to the degree that our soul wanted to. Um, and then when we get home, we realize what he did for us. But while we're down here, we, we, we're in a different consciousness. So, before this happened to me, probably for about three months, this uh, losing my thought and going completely and utterly blank in the middle of making points happened. And I I didn't know what was going on. I knew something had changed and I knew it wasn't dementia or something along those lines. But um, I don't know, I guess it's back. I don't think I used to do this this much. I did it some because that's the way he programs my brain or whatever. Hmm. Um, oh, so anyway, what he can do though, is he can, he does have a lot of leeway in sending signs like in clouds or in nature or in numbers. Um, he, he can do that pretty openly. So if you ask for it and pray for it, uh, he can send you things. You just keep your eyes out. If it's something big, he'll have your eyes go to it. Like, don't ever feel like, oh man, what if I miss it? He won't let you miss it. Um, but I'd like to post them on my community page. So I'm looking for pictures that you all have taken yourselves um, within the past couple of years. Because his freedom and or if you have something amazing that's been in your life for a while because God plays a long game. He, he, he remembers the past as if it were, were today. So, um, anyway, if you ask him and then keep your eyes out, uh, he's pretty sure that anyone who wants to participate will, uh, get a little surprise or a little wink. He calls them winks from God. And, uh, I'm going to put my email address at the bottom of this uh, this description or whatever they call it. And uh, if you get any pictures that are your own, uh, if you do see something fabulous and you want to share it that you saw online or something, that's fine. I can't. I'm not going to put it under the, the ones that he sent to my uh, personal viewers. I'd like like if you've been watching my videos and if you keep watching my videos, like God knew you were going to watch them. So if he sent you something in the past several years uh, and you have a picture of it, just something cool in nature, um, please send it to me so I can get some of these on the community page. I'll get, I'll try and find some of the animals that have been uh, having flaws that he sent me. And, or they're discolored. A lot of the times he'll send discolored animals. 
but he always loves the damaged ones best, always. And that's kind of how he feels about human beings. Uh, he kind of made the rules about our rewards based on how sorry he felt for us when we get home. So if you've just had the worst life ever, God is going to be like, he, he's going to have his hands out to you first. You know, like he's going to run towards you because he wants you to know how much he appreciates what you've done. And he wants you to know that it's all over and that for eternity, you will be grateful for what you've been through. Don't eat the grass. Come on. Um, so that's kind of how it works and why why uh going back to the going back to the topic of i know for a fact the verse about your body being the temple has absolutely nothing to do with physical health god controls your physical health he can change it at any moment um but you have to reach whatever suffering level he's written for you so uh He's not going to pull you out of something unless it's important. So, please uh, send any pictures. I'm thinking he's he does a lot of triple, quadruple numbers. If you see anything, just like, oh man, I know God sent that to me. Um, forward it to me so I can start making this uh, winks for God's viewers of my channel. Um... He keeps having this Easter Island head pop up everywhere I go. Stuff like that. It's just kind of anything weird he does, let me know. Um, and I'll post it on my on my uh, community page. Okay, well, I guess that's it for now. Uh, I hope you are all having a blessed fall. Um, oh, oh, Titus 1.15. Titus 1.15. This is God's verse on uh, pretty much how you should feel about anything. If you know, it, it, it's about how everything is righteous to the righteous and the wicked will turn everything into something impure. That's Titus 1.15. And that's kind of the spirit of Christianity. And uh, I'll do more talks about that. But if you're concerned or you're not sure if there's biblical evidence that Halloween is not uh, despised by God, um, then that's the verse. He just had me thinking about Korea. There was a Halloween stampede today, I guess. He keeps having me remember this comment I read where someone said, why did all these people have cardiac arrest? It's like a mass cardiac arrest incident. So I don't know if we'll get more information on that. I don't know if he, I mean, honestly, if he's, it'd be a lot easier to go through cardiac arrest than it would be to go some other way. Oh, he just had me thinking he might have to have so many people die that uh, that people have to die at their moment. They have to die at the exact second that was written quadrillions of years ago. There's no exceptions. There's no extensions. Uh, if there's an extension, then it was written to be an extension. So if you die and come back, you that was a part of your story. So... Um, why? This is so, just, mm, my whole life is just like this. I never know whether I'm coming or going or looking up or looking down or just walking around the earth. Yesterday, he said we're pretty much on a magic school bus headed into the light of God. Like the earth is the magic school bus. And uh, then we like get transferred to a different bus. 
<laughs> and that bus, Jesus' light or the blood of Christ. Christ has been through so much suffering that he's crystal clear like a diamond. Um, the blood of Christ is what's going to protect uh, people on their journey from earth to wherever we go. So Jesus saved us. Otherwise, no, nah, there was no way. So um, that was just out of nowhere. Uh, I wonder how many times I've ended a video by saying I was going to end it and then just kept randomly talking. Like he's so consistent with his annoying things. He loves repetition, repetition, repetition. That's why we, that's why we have 24 hour days. Cause you have to, you know, get up and do your morning routine every day. He could have made, he could have made the days however long he wanted, but he wanted to get the maximum number of repetitions without making people go crazy. Cause sometimes, especially when I was younger and cared about my appearance, I'd be like physically tired of redoing the same thing every day, washing hair, curling hair, putting makeup on every day. So he made the day just long enough that we don't go insane from having to redo it. So he's a real big lover of perfect timing. And then in uh, unison, he designed the human brain to adapt to the whole system as well. For example, he could have made he could have made it unbearable for us to have to repeat our morning routine. Uh, at a different number of hours. Like it could have been 12, it could have been 36. It's all up to him. But that's what he found worked. So I guess I repeat these uh, things, these pauses and whatnot, because everything, the world is in constant battle. Anyway, he uh, loves the imperfections, and I don't think most people think of God that way. He loves dirty, grimy, grungy, used, well-loved, you know, books, stuffed animals, homes. Um, he loves things with meaning. Now, if it's just negative meaning, that's, uh, but I guess it's still a part of him. Anyway, all right. That is my uh, little update. God bless you all. Amen.